Today, we're going to be talking about picking the right Gibson Les Paul for you, talking about three main models within the line, both modern and original. Stick around. How's it going, guys? This is Cooper Greenberg here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, uh, turn your notifications on, and click the links below for some cool merch over on Teespring. Also, if you're into it, become an insider on Patreon, and we thank all of y'all that have already subscribed over there. Um, hope y'all are enjoying it, and uh, let us know what you want to see. But you know, if you haven't already, there's behind-the-scenes content, early looks at new products, and uh, all kinds of fun stickers and t-shirts and discounts and all the kinds of stuff that guitar players want. So, um, like I said, today we are running down three Gibson Les Pauls to kind of clarify some of the confusion around their models and maybe try and find the one that's right for you. Um, you know, we've done this with Stratocasters and Telecasters and there was a lot more to pick from in my mind um, with those, a lot of different lines through Squire and Fender, American Fender, all that different stuff. But I think this is a good video because I'm just running down stuff made by Gibson. There's plenty of Epiphones out there. Um, I'll definitely talk about those in a future video because that might be the right call for you. But if you're trying to get your hands on a Gibson branded Les Paul, um, I kind of narrowed it down to three choices for this video that uh, really kind of encapsulate what I think is sort of crucial on a Les Paul. And, you know, there's three different kind of clear price points as well. So we're going to start right now with the Les Paul Tribute. Um, and actually, before we get into that, so if you haven't watched this channel, you don't know um, how Gibson kind of differentiates between models. There is the Gibson Modern and Gibson Original um, for both acoustics and electrics. Now, they're kind of self-explanatory. The modern guitars are a little more, um, I don't know, modern, uh, but they have, you know, features and different things that wouldn't be featured on sort of an original Les Paul, more of a traditional style. So both of the lower end guitars that we're looking at today, both the Tribute and the Studio are going to be from the modern collection. And then the standard 60s is in the original collection. So starting off in the modern, this is, I believe, um, kind of the starting point for the true traditionalists um, Les Paul formula. These go for about $11.99, so not exactly cheap, but when you compare it to some of the standard or even custom shop different stuff, um, it is relatively less expensive. Um, and part of what goes into that is that this is an all satin unbound body and neck. So um, still got the kind of classic formula of a mahogany body with a maple cap. And what also makes this modern is that it is weight relieved. So they call it ultra weight relief, I believe. And there's a ton of routing out of this body to make it a little more comfortable, a little less, uh, you know, hard on the shoulders and the neck when you've got the strap on. Um, and it's just, you know, it's very comfortable. It doesn't take away too much weight to where it feels cheap. It still feels very hefty. And for those of you that really eagle eye the weight on your guitars, this might still be a little too heavy for you, but for the most part, it's a little more comfortable than, you know, the standard, which is not weight relieved, but we'll get to that. Um, this finish is Satin Honey Burst. There are a few different finishes in the Tribute line. Um, and I think that Tribute, you know, that name sort of comes from the fact that aesthetically it is paying tribute to more of a traditional kind of look. Um, the nice burst, visible wood grain, all that kind of thing. All of these are going to have a tunomatic and stop bar tailpiece. Um, same exact controls on this one that you would find in a standard, just two volumes, two tones, um, rosewood fretboard. It's just as bare bones as it gets. And it almost feels like a road worn, if, if you can call it that, you know, type of guitar. It's, you know, the satin on the neck kind of makes it feel like it's been worn in. Um, so it's really nice. It's got the vintage style, um, you know, tuning machines, the Gibson Deluxe, and it's made in the United States. It's a Les Paul. It's less than $2,000, which is hard to find, but it's also just right over $1,000. So I'm going to play a little bit on it. Uh, the pickups on here are 490R 
and 490T, um, rhythm and treble, R and T. Um, and they're just kind of great sounding middle of the road humbuckers. So we're gonna take a listen to these and then compare them to what's next, which is the Gibson Studio Les Paul. Um, but take a listen to the tribute and uh, tell me what you think. All right, so that was a little bit on the Gibson Tribute Les Paul or Les Paul Tribute in Satin Honeyburst 490 R and T pickups. And now let's compare that to the Gibson Les Paul Studio. Now the studios, um, you know, have kind of been recognized as the affordable Les Paul. I think, at least in my circle in the store and people that I talk to, um, the studio is kind of the go-to for somebody that maybe has a budget that does not accommodate a standard line Les Paul. Um, and I myself had a studio for a long time. It was the Fireburst studio. I thought that was the coolest color that they were offered in. I still think it's really cool. I did sell it, but that's not because it was bad guitars, just because I, you know, I needed something else. So um, Gibson Les Paul studio, this one is in Mystic Cheeto Burst, I think is what it's called. Um, or no, it's a Tangerine Burst is what this one is. And again, they offer a few different finishes. There's a wine red, um, the smokehouse burst, which is kind of like, you know, a blue diamond smokehouse almond came to life and uh, ebony, which I think probably looks the best. But I do have the tangerine burst here because it's an eye catching finish. It's cool. Um, and this also, like I said, is in the modern line. But, um, you know, unlike the tribute, it does have some very, very modern features. Um, that sort of make it a nice studio piece. I mean, it's called studio for a reason. It can be somewhat a jack of all trades because of its pickup switching. So um, 490R still in the rhythm neck position, but in the treble or bridge position, it's a 498T. Um, and from what I can understand and kind of from what I hear, it's just a little more punchy, a little more high output, high treble, works even better with gain. Um, I should also clarify that in these demos today, um, instead of doing a clean demo and an overdriven demo um, to show sort of two polar opposites, I'm going through the amp and I've just got a little bit of overdrive so you can hear some clean, nice tone when I'm playing softly. And then when I'm digging in, you can hear how these pickups react with a little bit of drive. Nothing that's gonna be super high octane, but I think that's kind of where a lot of people like their Les Pauls in the first place is sort of a little bit of amp drive or maybe just a transparent overdrive. So um, kind of trying to work with that a little bit. And I think it shows the differences between these pickups very well. Um, these two pickups, the 490 and the 498, are both able to be split by push-pull knobs in both volume uh, pots. So um, you'll kind of see me messing with this as I'm demoing when I'm up here you know, you can have just a nice single coil tone in the neck or a solo single coil tone in the bridge. And then all these different combinations when you're in the middle position up, both of them up, both of them down or one or the other split. Um, and so that's kind of your studio jack of all trades sort of thing. This has a little bit of a difference. It's still an unbound maple cap on a mahogany body. This neck 
and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the neck on the Tribute is a maple neck. This is a mahogany neck, and it's got the Grover kind of old school style tuners, which, you know, the tuners on the Tribute sort of um, harken back to the standard 50s. The tuners on the studio kind of reference the uh, standard 60s. So that's kind of a cool little difference there. Same deal, rosewood fretboard and all the classic elements of a great Les Paul, maple mahogany, rosewood, all that different stuff, two great humbuckers. Uh, but try and listen right now to the difference and how these pickups sound maybe when they're split, maybe when they're not split, and how it compares to the sound and the output of the Tribute, which should be very, very similar. But spoiler alert, I think it's pretty different. This one's also weight relieved, so it's a great way to kind of compare Body should be very, very close. Pickup should be very close and everything else kind of falls in line. So it's somewhat of a mystery to me why they sound so different. You take a listen, maybe I'm hearing it wrong. Um, but yeah, here we go on the Cheeto Burst Gibson Les Paul Studio. Um, all kinds of coil splits going on, take a listen. y'all so that's a little tangerine dream on the tangerine burst gibson les paul studio and now let's move to kind of the the mac daddy the one that they can be all compared to the gibson les paul standard 60s from the gibson original line so obviously this is kind of the the one this is the one that a lot of people want they come into the store all the time either one in the 50s or the 60s um, we have a 60s here right now which is why we're using it but the 50s is um, an excellent guitar as well and they're a lot closer than you'd imagine i mean a little bit little differences here and there but as compared to the previous two that we just looked at the tribute in the studio um, this starting off with the body is maple cap on a mahogany body but this is double a grade uh, figured maple which is kind of the look that we all are trying to see it's got these beautiful finishes through both lines the heritage cherry iced tea burst bourbon burst tobacco burst all those kind of classic great looking bursts from gibson they always boast a beautiful figured top which uh it's it's really hard to beat and um this is not weight relieved slightly heavier than its previous uh you know two competitors here mahogany neck grover style tuner well grover tuners not grover style um and the pickups are probably besides the construction the binding up here the the different grades of wood pickups are different so this is the burst bucker 61r and 61t burst buckers are just amazing beautiful very clear but 
just push the absolute pinnacle of like, you know, that humbucker tone that you want from a Les Paul. Um, there are no push pulls on here. It's just very standard two tones, two volumes, just like how it was with the Tribute. Um, and now I will say this in the, the wiring here, they used orange drop capacitors. And now I'd like to open up a prompt for either the comments or a different video. Do orange drop capacitors make a difference? That is something that is touted on all the nice high-end Gibsons on their website in the original line, orange drop capacitors. I have heard so many legends and lore about these capacitors. Um, so obviously they're doing something right using these. The previous two did not have the orange drops in them. So maybe that's where the magic comes from, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. Either way, Burst Bucker 61's on here, uh, beautiful flame top, maple cap. And again, you know, it's got binding all over it. It's not weight relieved. I think all of the things that go into a guitar affect its sound in some way. My coworker, Chris, that you all know, always talks about them being physics experiments. So obviously everything's gonna change the tone a little bit. So let's listen to kind of how weight relief, different pickups, um, and just overall different appointments on this guitar um, affect how it sounds. I love these pickups, so you're, you're kind of hearing me be inspired in a different way um, than the other pickups. Not to say that they were not good pickups. These are just really what I want to hear when it comes, from, uh, when it comes to humbuckers. So take a listen. Gibson Les Paul, standard 60s. I hope you dig it. So there you have it. There are three great Les Pauls. The last one you heard was the standard 60s, which I just gotta be honest with you, obviously that one's my favorite. I love that guitar. It's been a dream guitar of mine for some time. Um, you might remember though that earlier in the video, I said I owned a Gibson Les Paul Studio. And that's because I think that the price of Gibson Les Paul standards, whether they're 50s or 60s, is kind of unattainable. Um, you know, that's that's a really high, price to pay for most kind of just random you know musicians like myself when i got it at the time that i did um, i still think it's somewhat of an exorbitant price um, always you know prices subject to change the gibson les paul standard right now i believe goes for 24.99 um, like i said the tribute goes for about 11.99 and uh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but the studio goes for $14.99. So there's kind of a, a big step up from, you know, tribute to studio in terms of price, a few hundred dollars, and then a really substantial step up with about $1,000 added on top between the studio and the standard. Um, and so I'd like to kind of tell you my verdict on that is I think that the tribute is actually a better value than the studio. I really love the standards, so let's just put that out there that 
if anybody had twenty four ninety nine laying around and they had to buy a guitar, they would probably go for the standard. But if you're in between the two price points of the modern collection, the tribute, and the studio, I think that the feel of the tribute is a little bit better just because I like the kind of nitro satin thing they got going on here. That's not always how I feel about, you know, these types of satin finishes on guitars and Fender, I'd probably go the other way. But I do like this kind of satin on a Les Paul. And I think that the pickups, while they should be very similar, had a lot more clarity on the Tribute for some reason. And maybe that's because of all the extra stuff that goes into splitting the coils in the studio. Um, I think that those ones over there sounded a little muffled, um, while these really handled clean and kind of heavy attack driven just a little bit better. And that's completely my opinion. I'd like to hear if you guys agree or disagree. Um, the only thing that I will add on top, which is sort of a mean thing to say, I think the finishes are better on the tributes. Even though they're satin finishes, even though this isn't a figured maple top, I think that this pays tribute a little bit better um, to what I like to see in a Les Paul, a nice burst finish. This is probably closest to maybe like the unburst or like a, a lemon burst or something like that. But I think that all the bursts on the tributes sort of, you know, feel a little more right to me than the smokehouse burst, the tangerine burst. I won't call it Cheeto anymore. Um, but I think all of those are a little too modern, a little too, you know, a little too different for my taste. And this is totally, you know, it's, it's everybody's personal taste. I think that the tribute wins out on this one. So if you uh, if you're looking for a Les Paul, you want to spend less than a standard. There's a, a lot of different things that you can check out, and I think for me, if you're into the kind of stuff that I am, a little more old school, a little more bare bones, stripped down, not adding new features, the tribute might be the one for you. If you are playing in a studio, if you're a studio musician, or you got a bunch of different types of gigs where you bring you know, several different guitars, ones with P90s, single coils, and humbuckers, you can probably capture all the different sounds a little better on the studio. So it's really up to you. I would say maybe go for the Ebony or the Black uh, Studio because I'm not sure about that one. You can tell that I'm pretty conflicted, not conflicted, just you know, hateful maybe, I don't know. But I like the classic Les Paul look. I like it when they stick to the formula and, you know, Truly Tribute is probably the best name for this because I think it pays tribute to the kind of standard classics that we all know and love. But like I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, you can let me know which one is your favorite. If you think it's a pure runaway for the standard, I get that. But if you think that either one of these other two has something cool to offer, um, and you know, I think it's really great that Gibson now has a lot, a lot of different options. I'd love to dive into some of the Les Paul special tributes or the juniors, any of that kind of stuff um, in the near future. You know, something with P90s and a wraparound bridge might be in the near future. You just gotta keep your eyes open and, uh, and check out the channel, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, notifications because, uh, you know, we're doing cool stuff that's coming out all the time. But in the meantime, let me know which one was your favorite. Um, please comment below and just let us know what other kind of Les Pauls that you would like us to check out because luckily in a time where, you know, there are severe guitar shortages all over the world from every manufacturer for the most part um, and all kinds of supply constraints, we're lucky enough to be getting some Gibsons in, be able to do some videos with them. So uh, we love bringing them to you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Keep playing. We'll see you next time. Thank you.